Action CEO coming to you with a token called Meta Hero. It's blowing up in a few countries, and I want to make sure I cover it. And the reason I'm doing so is because one of you guys asked, you know, just came out on the channel and said, hey, could you take a look at this token? Yes, I can. Not only can can I, I'm excited to do so. My goal is to be able to provide you guys with value, with information that's going to benefit all of you. So if you have a comment, if you have a question, leave them down below. If you've got a token you want me to take a look at, do an in-depth run on it, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do so. With this one, my due diligence kind of hurt a little bit just because they... It, I asked the hard questions that people aren't willing to ask, and I was chastised for it. People were not very nice to me at times, but that's okay, because at the end of the day, I'm giving you true, correct information. And again, at the end of the day, guys, this is what I'm all about, giving you guys info without asking people for money and saying, oh, I'll cover your channel. I'll tell you guys what you're all about. I just need X number of dollars or X number of tokens. I'm not doing that. That is not me. That's not what I'm about. And if I ever you know, one of those things actually comes along, I'll let you know. No problem, no problem whatsoever. But to answer the question that's on the title, I know that people get a little crazy and have to wait 30 minutes until they hear the answer to a question that is in the title. Like, I hate when people do that. Point blank, no. Meta Hero is not a scam at all. They are actually really transparent with the way they do things. However, the way they do things isn't so much the way I like to do things. And I don't think I can put my name behind a token. And you'll see throughout the research that I did and the, you know, what I uncovered, it's not, it's not what it claims to be at times. And not, not even what it claims to be, but what people think it is. So I'll break it down into three easy steps. First, I'm going to be fair and I'm going to share with you guys what Metaverse talks about. What is Metaverse saying about itself? What does it explain? And they are really transparent and clean with stuff, which is, I really do appreciate. So if you guys are watching from MetaHero, Rob, dude, like great job, great business. It's just, you'll see the conversations I've had and you might not be very thrilled about how it went down. Secondly, <laughs> you're gonna see the research. You're gonna see the questions I asked and how people responded to those. You're gonna, your jaws will definitely drop on this one. And third, we'll do a little show and tell where I want to show you what I think about the company and videos from the, C, you know, from the CEO and how things are being portrayed and why I can't stand behind um, certain aspects of the organization or the token itself. Let's get into it because there's a lot of stuff to cover and I don't want to be here all night. We're going to do this in one take like I usually do and i'm not editing this thing so right down below you see disclaimer i am not a financial advisor nobody's paying me to do this so like until i get paid for that sort of thing i'm going to continue to not be a financial advisor not a lawyer not anything like that these are my thoughts these are the things that i looked up and the things i found out about it and hopefully it helps you because it opened my eyes and helped me tremendously and if it does help you that like button is available i want to earn it i don't want you to just smash it I want to earn it. So let's go through it. If you know that this is already good content, I told you it's not a scam. You can like it already, but this is the site. This is Meta Hero, right? And they're pretty awesome. So, you know, our team's seasoned, tightly knit. So they have a really good team behind them. Their project, you know, the, they're working on, like people have used Ferrari, you know, uh, Disney. People have used their technology that they're implementing in this. It's really cool. At the end of the day, if we were to boil things down, this is what it does. It's a matter of creating yourself in a 3D world. It's bringing your image to the metaverse. So you can create your own 3D avatar. You can scan items and create 3D NFTs. The goal is to create an ecosystem where people are trading NFTs, where people are bringing their NFTs into games. It's really cool, the thought behind this. It's essentially your um, Ready Player One, right? Ready Player One brought to action. And these guys know that AR and VR is a technology that is just about to blow up and they want to be in on it. They want to take advantage of what's about to happen because there is a lot of money to be made. And I truly respect the business aspect of this organization. I think Rob has been doing really well for himself and what he's doing here with MetaHero, it's, it's nothing short of great when it comes to business. This is the Meta Scanner. Now, the Meta Scanner is this gigantic, you know, operation that brings people into the 3D world. It's 64 cameras. It's 16 um, columns that 
take a bunch of pictures of yourself. So you got a picture from the top, the mid, the bottom. That way you got, you know, multiple angles and they will splice things together and create a digital you. This is actually really cool. They're going to be in Dubai. They're going to be doing one with a glass floor. And that's how they're going to start kicking things off. I'm really appreciative of this slide right here, right on the homepage, the tokenomics. A lot of people are getting some of the stuff wrong, so it's really nice that they are upfront with stuff. Hero is a deflationary token with a zero to 10% fee on each transaction. I don't like this, but I am really glad they put it right up front. Um, it's, you know, they're, they're talking about every time you transact, you're gonna pay a fee of some sort, of some amount. It's either a zero, five, or 10%. And I will go over those items as well because that's really important. Smart staking, so 0 to 2% interaction, is distributed to all hero holders. Essentially, if you hold the token, you get to be rewarded by having a token. Burning, they also burn. So part of that fee goes into, you know, into burning so that the token stays deflationary and there's always more and more value, essentially, to the token. Um, auto liquidity, another thing that that fee goes to is liquidity. And I'll show you that breakdown. It's pretty interesting the way they chose to do this. Buyback and burn. So uh, buyback and burn can initially uh, it can be initiated when liquidity exceeds ten million dollars. The idea is that if the fees you know go over ten million dollars, they can do a vote to burn tokens to bring it back to that uh, ten million dollar mark. Utility. Only hero can be used to transact in our ecosystem for real world utility. The translation, it's a gift card. I know, I'm simplifying it, but that's what it boils down to. Um, they have their app, and in their app, they have a little dashboard where you connect, connect your wallet, and it allows you to purchase the token right there. It, you can see your rewards, and you can see the market data. They're adding more to it. Again, this is the beginning stages of the token, so there's not as much to it. Uh, but you see down here on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you see $14,538.36. This is important. Keep that in mind. That rewards right there, that's actually a, a point of contention for a lot of people that are actually purchasing the token right now. Now, I'm going to get into white paper. I'm going to try to fly it through this because this video is probably going to end up being 30 minutes long and I understand that's a lot to cover. I'm not even going to do edits. I'm just going to go right through it. If you got to watch this at double speed, that's okay. I understand, but it's worth it for me to actually give you these details because I want to do this company justice and it's important, right? Like if somebody asks me to cover something, I'm not going to just fly through it. I'm going to give it the, you know, the, the attention that it deserves. So taking a look at the Meta Hero white paper. First off, little pet peeve. This white paper, it's just images. You can't select text. It's super annoying. And it's only for the English version, right? If you open in other languages, which I did because I want to make sure things matched, you can select it. It's just text. But for some reason, the English version is not searchable. It's not text-based. Like, it's just not fun to go through it. Going down, executive summit, so, you know, the summary here, it talks about how um, the, they partner with a world leader in 3D scanning, Wolf Studio, their cutting edge technology. Basically, Wolf Studio is pretty sick with the way they're doing things. Um, they worked on Cyberpunk 2077, and they did some really good things. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you like the game or not. Like, at the end of the day, the quality of their scans are fantastic, and that's what they're, you know, monopolizing here is like, hey, we're going to join in with these guys, and we're going to tokenize stuff so that we can bring you know, the, the real world into a metaverse. That's what it is. Um, they talk about what makes them different and uh, what makes them different is Rob Grin. I, I don't understand why, how that makes that. And it talks about how he's helped self-funded. Cool, man. Congratulations on being wealthy on make it on your own, whatever you want to call that. And uh, I don't, I don't know how that makes you, um, different but and we'll get into that it's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine when it comes to the project but they're anyway so which in april 2021 became the most traded asset on coin gecko um basically it talks about how rob is awesome that way the company's awesome there is something to be said about that but here's the mission our ultimate mission is to take crypto adoption to the next level I went into this one and I asked really hard questions in regards to this to the team to figure out what they really meant by this. Um, did not get the answers I wanted and a little further down the line, uh, it came out like screaming what the answer was and you'll see that. So the vision is to bring everyday part, you know, bring 
everyday part of me metaverse bridge between reality and digital realm like i was explaining to you guys it's pretty straightforward if you guys ever have any questions about a project please read the white paper from you know front to back like it's important it's worth it um a note from the founder and i know we just talked about rob but rob comes at it again and rob starts talking about his vision and what he sees um happening it's a little awkward because rob does not look like this right now you i'll show you a video of rob and things that he has to say um that's a very different looking rob so meta hero project aims to encompass several major markets so they're talking about markets right they're like they want to get gamers artists they celebrities influencers marketing professionals professional athletes online fashion platforms they want to take over the world when it comes to the N nft market and they're not shy about saying that which is totally cool so in 2021 um here's what happened with uh nfts two billion in sales just in the first quarter alone it, like things are picking up quick um, the gaming market is also picking up tremendously the uh, a vr ar market is also picking up so why not bring it all together and monopolize it right it's genius i actually like hats off to you rob like this is a great idea it's a great plan name dropping really helps with search engine optimization so despite elon musk's efforts like who cares about elon musk like this is just a name drop so that it get you know elon's name into uh, uh you know the, the white paper but it is what it is guys anyway none of that really makes a big difference this is how they're looking at breaking things down they talk about infrastructure human interface decentralization um the economy discovery there's a lot to this here which i think it's just a pretty graphic more than anything else um the metaverse and the blockchain so here is what they're looking to do with the metaverse right they're talking about centralized and decentralized platforms they're talking about identities they're talking about um how stuff is being utilized they're sitting right in this avatar and identities um portion and the goal is to create these you know non-fungible tokens because they're certificates you know of ownership and authentication of digital art and collectibles everybody knows what an nft is here on this channel hopefully if not let me know and i'll cover that as well but the hero token is going to be what you use to purchase the ability to digitize those items how it works so basically you got to get on a on a uh, on a platform and have a bunch of pictures of yourself taken like that's what they're looking to do same thing with the nfts they want to get the meta scanner to uh scan items as well at the end of the day the goal is to digitize as many items as possible as many people as possible so that they can have this thing um not this thing but the entire world digitized right so the meta scanning technology that they talked about here it's the same picture from the home page they did a really good job editing this um and there is a video of this exact room but it doesn't look as fancy because of the added graphics and stuff that's on top I know it's a, it's a lot to go over future cases they talk about ideas of how to implement this which is awesome um then they talk about the hero app how the goal is to make sure that there's transparency and you can look at things it's you know integrated um they are going to add visa purchases right on this right on the on the platform so that you can just buy your hero, hero tokens with the visa credit card um the token so here's where things get interesting so hero is a proprietary deflationary token I do have the certification that I want to go over it as well. Um, so with a 5% five fee, five fee added to every transaction, this is where things get a little sketchy. So 5% fee added to every transaction, um, you know, you got the 0 to 2% of each transaction is going to be staking, to 0 to 2 is going to be burning, auto liquidity, 0 to 6, buyback if um the token is you know by back and burning if the token is more than a 10 million dollars worth in the liquidity pool and we get to the tokenomics take a look at this um and i'm not going to give you my exact thoughts on this yet but this is just how it works if you're you know going from wallet to wallet um let's say i have hero tokens and i want to send them to you well i lose five percent of those tokens when i send and then you also lose five percent of the tokens you're receiving that 10 percent fee gets two percent of it gets burned two percent goes to you know goes to rewards to the people that are actually holding the token three percent um is exchanged to bnb plus three percent is set to auto liquidity that goes on pancake swap it's a lot of fees now if you're going wallet to pancake swap 
Well, guess what? You get to pay 5% fees. So when you buy, you pay. When you sell, you pay. That's how you get 10%. So if you want to buy a token, then sell the token back, you're, 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 you're giving up 10% of that. I mean, it's a really good system if you're looking for people not to day trade because there needs to be a uh, increase in price of more than 10% for you to be able to have, you know, any kind of gains on your on your money. Um, I it's hard. The, the, it's hard for people to understand this when they're selling because when they sell, they want to sell max, right? And it fails transactions will fail when this happens. And the reason it fails is because some of it gets burned. So for you to actually sell you need to do a calculation of 5% less than what you actually hold. Here's where their 0% fee comes in. If you're transacting with the NFT marketplace, if you're buying NFTs or if you're selling NFTs, apparently there are no fees then. So great. It's part of their own ecosystem. So they don't want to, you know, charge a fee on top of that. Um, again, this has not been deployed quite yet. So we remain to see what it will actually look like. All right. So game plan, what they're looking to do is actually deploy these units in these locations right here. And we'll see i mean i'm in southern california we'll see if i get a chance to actually go down here and take a look at what this unit looks like at some point in time blah 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 business model this is all like you know there's profitable because there's a lot of stuff going on and then we get to this little paragraph which i think is really really important currently custom-made full body avatars can be created individually by designers at a price of up to 700 dollars we will offer um, you know, the quick and ultra HD realistic avatars for $200 at our global locations. So it's $200 right now. And they talk about how they understand that this is, you know, scans may be out of reach for average users, but this premium, you know, premium offering, unlike other prices will go down with scale and time. That remains to be seen what this is going to look like as far as pricing going down because they are doing a lot of scans and it's really, really profitable. It doesn't take a ton of time to do a scan because of the technology behind it. And again, I'm all about rewarding, you know, founders, rewarding people to develop things. It's just that a lot of people are buying into this as if this is the next frontier and they might not even have enough tokens to get themselves scanned. That's the that's the scary thing. Here's the revenue forecast. So 2020, when they have, you know, 12 of those scanners placed around the globe, um, that's how many, you know, scans you're looking to do and the revenue they're looking to generate. And the NFT revenue they're looking to generate. It's a lot of money. It's a lot, a lot of money. And it keeps growing, growing and growing and growing and growing. So by 2026, you're looking at having 200 of these units. And yes, these units are exclusive. They talk about how you can purchase one of these units, but let's get into that here next. So the MetaHero revenue sources include the 3D chamber, the NFT generation fees, the NFT uh, rolling rolling royalties, um, the MetaHero NFT marketplace transaction fees. MetaHero NFT marketplace transaction fees. I thought it was 0% transactions. What happened? Why is that listed? quite interesting and man my chats says they do just do not stop it is going and going and going all day it seems like it's just i have a lot of people that want to talk about things i guess that's okay because you guys are my main priority and i want to get right into the details of the platform here so scrolling on down the launch they you know again robert put down 10 million dollars in seed capital to get this thing started um, I'll show you guys his net worth later so you know what that means. But this is the breakdown of tokens. Um, it's a lot of tokens going to a lot of people that are not you and me. There's no mining. There's nothing along those lines. It's essentially um, locking things up for liquidity. And then you have, you know, company reserves, which are locked for five years and unlocked every six months, 10% of it. Um, it's exchange listings. It gets expensive to get listed in some of these places, so this totally makes sense. Marketing. This can mean anything. This can mean I'm giving money. You know, I'm giving hero tokens to YouTubers to go make videos. Uh, strategic partners. This can also mean, hey, I'm gonna go make somebody happy and have them talk about me. Have them place my machine in some random place that I want them to put. Team and advisors. This is again the company. A it's people that started the business and they want to get rewarded for it. It's a 30 month lock that's actually healthy. I mean, the longer the lock, the better, which means they're going to be supporting this long term. 
private presale, public presale, this is where the people actually come into play. So it's only about 20% of it all. Roadmap and roadmap is actually pretty extensive. They have a lot of plans as to how they're going to move forward, the things that they're going to do. And so far, it seems like they're sticking to it, which is a good thing. Hmm. Skipping to the very end, um, publish 10 year plan to scale to 100 million users. That's Q1 of 2022. I'm really excited to see what they're going to say about this because I like when people have the foresight to see what could become of a token, of a coin. So that's exciting to me. Again, hey, Rob, what's going on, man? Seeing you again. And it's a, he is the youngest self-made entrepreneur to make Forbes 100 richest list in Poland. All right, you got money. That's great. Good job. Disclaimer, and this is, you know, essentially the end of the day that says that, guess what? It's risky. Things can fail. Please invest at your own risk. Appreciate that, right? Again, another piece that I want to cover and do my due diligence is the certificate. They have been certified. So this is the audit on the company. And a lot of these issues, it's garbage, right? Like most of these things, when it comes to info findings and minor findings, it's like, oh, you didn't write something the way we expected you to write. Always, you know, you want to look at anything above medium. Um, so medium, major, and critical. These are usually the big ones that you want to be concerned about, and you always want to check out every single token you look at. Please make sure they have an audit that they have been looked at by some, a, you know, some third party that they can't pay off. These guys are super trustworthy, and I think it's, you know, the my the, the ones I like the best when it comes to to you know the certification because he. Audits are really easy to understand and like the way they do them. Here is the PDF. So scrolling down, we can see the, all these issues listed. And I want to actually focus on this here. So logic issue on reward fee. All right. This is going to get interesting. Here we go. E <laughs> the logic issue on reward fee. So they categorize this as a major issue. And as per white paper said, 1% of transactions is proportionally distributed among all holders as a passive reward. However, there is no reward distribution logic. Interesting, right? Remember how I showed you that picture from the homepage? Let me see if I have it up. See the rewards right there on the homepage? According to the audit report, that's not actually going to people. And the way that they explained it, and I'm going to skip something here. So the way they explain it, according to our white paper, 1% of transactions are distributed along to all, you know, all holders. And they said that, yeah, we noticed that, but it's not really happening. Um, the reduced fee is only due to the reduced transfer amount, so both sender and receiver do not get the reward. Reward fee kept accumulating and never gets distributed. Yeah, you heard that right. So the rewards that people are saying they're getting, they're not really getting. They get, they're stuck. So their response to this was that, they can't distribute it because the rewards, it would be too much, right? And it would create an endless loop where people would essentially be charged a fee on top of fee because every time they pay out, it would be another um, transaction. So they have a response to that. What they do is holder rewards are added to the balance in the balance of method. So I know this is getting a little bit technical, but it's worth understanding. Basically, they said, we're not going to change this. They want to be transparent to these, uh, you know, to the holders. And what they're doing is that whole transaction thing is not going to happen. The people are not getting their tokens right away. They're going to sit in a reward pool. And people are really confused because these rewards keep going up and down. And it's all based on the number of people that are buying and selling the tokens. So the rewards get really confusing. And I'm going to scroll back up and I'll show you the biggest thing. Recommendation this is what, you know, Certic is saying to do. Consider to implement the reward distribution logic or just to remove the reward fee and update the white paper because it seems not helpful to incentivize, to motivate people to buy Hero Token. The reward fee is indicating that when a user... When a user wants to transfer his or her money to someone else or receive money from others, he or she has to pay everyone in the market a small portion of his money. This is not reasonable. Not my words. Independent auditors said that this is not reasonable. Guys, like, I know that I have my own thoughts and opinions on this company, but somebody else is saying that this is not reasonable. I mean, that should account for something, right? At the end of the day, like, I know that I, I, I might be biased, but 
I want to make sure that I want to make sure that people understand that this is not good. In my opinion, it's not a good way to do it. And somebody else, a third party, said so. It's not smart to do it this way. But wait, there's more. You're gonna see how upset some people get over this stuff because it's 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 real, right? It's it's real. Oh boy. Okay. Here is how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna show you this portion now, and this video is gonna run forever, and it's gonna be the longest video I make on this channel probably ever, but it's worthwhile. Listen to Rob. I don't I want to give him the you know the benefit of the doubt, and I want you guys to hear what he says. Because it's it's important for me not to just be saying, oh, this is what I think and in a story. Like this is straight from him. He streamed live on June 26. I mentioned on a a few interviews. I'm gonna be a father this year. When I learned that I'm gonna be a father, my whole perspective of the world changed. I realized that I'm bringing a new life into this world, and that I need to get my shit together and make sure that I, I, I did quite well. But that's that's not really the point. The point is that I realized that crypto is the most single most important technology that has ever been invented in modern human history. Uh, there are multiple reasons for this, but namely, it is the only technology that I believe that can save mankind from total destruction because that is the direction that we're currently floating towards. Total auto autocratic, you know, governmental control and uh, just corporations and governments and corrupt cahoots, cronyism disparity of wealth it's just filthy it's disgusting and you know the elites they they rob the everyday man and woman of their liberty and of their money and their monetary energy that we sacrifice our lives to generate and so you know i see it as a urgent call to action because i mentioned on a, on a few interviews i'm gonna be a father this year when i all right so you heard him it's cronyism it's people you know the wealthy benefiting from things and the people who don't have anything not necessarily earning anything from that keep this in mind this is actually really important and I only open a handful of videos and all the videos that I open, I'm grabbing a snippet of them and showing it to you just so you can follow along. It's really odd because this is another video that he did. He, this is live from Wolf Studio. Um, and again, this is June 26. Now, if you take a look at this one, this is July 16th. Look at the first thing he says. Earlier a glitch, I've never done a live before, so. Did you hear that? He's, he's over at the studio. And his claim is that earlier glitch. I've never done a live before, so never done a live before. I don't know what he thought June twenty six was, but it literally says stream live. But that's besides the point. So what he's saying is that he wants to empower the people, which is our ultimate mission is to take crypto adoption to the next level. So that's exactly what I did. I went on Telegram and I was like, you know what? I need to ask these people about this thing. So if I click on view on Telegram, let me make sure it opened my app. It doesn't open why this is so odd well turns out i am no longer welcome to that platform and i'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen because i want to share my different account because that's the only way i can actually get in there and i'm gonna share my screen again all right so this is the link i'm actually going to give you guys this link and i'll put it on the description so you can read this stuff for yourself so i'm going to click view and group I switched my Telegram account, so here I am. I'm in. So this happened today, earlier today, at about noon, right? So um, Xander, and I'm going to talk about Xander. Rob, if you're watching this, if you actually have the, the the time to go over this, Xander is the man. Like, he understands the business as he knows how stuff works. Um, Xander was busy. I talked to Xander, sent a message to Xander the, day, the night before saying, hey, I got a lot of questions. I want to make sure I cover this. And Xander was really, really open to answering things and really covering stuff. So going down to what actually took place, Xander says, hey, I'm driving, but I'll be home soon. But you can ask, you know, this guy the questions. So I did. Because stuff is really straightforward. Like, I just want to get responses. And if there's an admin that can answer these questions, I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask the questions for you guys. So, as per Xander, here are some questions about the project. I read the white paper, ultimate mission is to take crypto adoption to the next level. What does it mean exactly? Is it to bring, you know, the general population to the blockchain or specific groups of people? Essentially, I want to know, are you guys fighting for mass adoption across the board? Or are you interested in really getting specific groups into this thing? Well... I'm going to scroll down. You guys are going to go, wait, what? Because it gets interesting. So I got ignored there for a while. There we go. And then you type it up. Here we go. Uh, MetaHero aim is to merging powerful scanning tech with a marketplace and novel deflationary token based economy to offer users, gamers, artists, and entrep uh, entrepreneurs direct access to virtual opportunities of the future. That did not answer my question. I'm just wondering, like, are you looking at mass adoption or are you looking to grab, you know, influential people, art, you know, uh, famous people into this thing? Like, what's the goal? Who are you trying to target? That That's the question. And like, I was 
Cool. All right. I said that's nice templated answer, but I'm wondering is the goal to push mass adoption forward or to give the user groups listed something cool? Like if you got money, you get to do this and it's a really cool thing, which it is a really cool thing. So here, here's like, who the heck says this, right? Like whatever it is, it answers your questions. Do, do you have any other? Like, no, it doesn't answer my question. That's why I did, did a follow-up. I don't know what you're thinking. Look at this. And then people just join in. What kind of question is this? Entitled one? No, it's not entitled. It's the opposite. People that are entitled don't ask questions about this. They expect things to be done their way. That's the opposite of what I'm doing. And again, remember, I was blocked from this. So I'm not allowed to show you what's going on. I had to create a separate account to be able to go in and read this over, which is beyond ridiculous. I said, oh, wow, okay. That, that, I moved on, right? So I just moved on, but I'm the one that's in the wrong. Will there be an opportunity for a scanning to take place outside of the, you know, the, the, their meta scanner at the end of the day? That's what I want to know. Like, because they do talk about a traveling version of the unit that's going to go around places and people are going to be able to line up outside and get themselves scanned. Again, great business model, but I don't know how feasible things are for the everyday average user. That's why I'm concerned. And again, Xander came back in. Jesus, I. Xander is the man. Like, I don't, Rob, I don't know how much you're paying him, but double it, double it. Because if you want to stay in business and if you want to be successful, this is your man. This is your guy. This is who you want on your team. So gamers will be using Hero without even knowing it in the future. Um, you know, as our fiat on ramp in the app, you'll be able to buy scans without um, assets, without risk of volatility. Like, the, he gets it. Like, he's trying to say, hey, this is meant for gamers. Like, a main, well, you know, big part of the people that we want to target are gamers. Like he's smart. So I got a response. Will there be scanning on, you know, the traveling thing as well as the app? And he said, yes. And I said, is it going to be app based or, you know, third party scanning locations? And here's the answer I got. Person or object to be scanned has to be inside a scanner for process to work, obviously. But I also get this other person who's apparently a meta gangsta saying both. Now, my question, did you read the white paper? It's all in there, plus much more. Like they are treating people like they're stupid. So Siraj goes back into it. Cryptocurrency decentralization nature will lead to an important rule, you know, in helping humanity um, decouple from the current fiat system, blah, 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 whatever. Like I get that. I totally get that. They don't know who I am. They have no idea. So just think about yourself going into a new, you know, group and trying to get information, trying to understand things. And this is how you get taken care of. Um, so I said, yeah, I read the white paper in multiple languages. Maybe I'm confused, but the response above didn't match because he said, yes, that both. Right. So like I was trying to understand what was going on. I was literally confused because people are saying different things. So I'm going to scroll down. What's the source of your confusion? Go down, 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 down. You said someone has to be inside the scanner, but the other guy said both in response to the app and third-party location. So you can do it both ways? Like, which one is it? That's why I'm confused. So, I mean, it's simple to see why I'm confused. So they said, yes, third-party locations are, you know, are rolled out shortly after showcase in Dubai. Like I was telling you guys, they're going to do a big thing in Dubai, which is fine. Um, and then they sent me, I know this is a lot to go over, but this is ridiculous. Like how insane it got. And I said, that's wonderful. But what about the app based, uh, scanning? Because that question wasn't answered, right? Like that was not covered. Um, here we go. That's a source of your confusion. There is none app scanning. So their goal is to make this a high end thing, not to be able to provide it via an app which a lot of people are actually able to do right now. Like, especially if you have a LiDAR camera on your phone, geez, that's like a piece of cake. You don't need a bunch of cameras going around things. Like, you know exactly how to plot points on an object. So, like, I'm trying to be nice. Like, I don't know how I was rude or anything like that, the way they took it, but I said, thank you, you're right. That's why I was confused. Like, I, I'm confused about something. I have no problem admitting it, right? So let's go on. Oh, man, this, like, I'm getting, I'm getting, like, Anxious, just thinking about the next portions that are coming up here. All right. Since you don't plan on an app capture option, 
How can MetaHero compete with applications that allow individuals to easily capture people and objects into 3D models? Apps like Displayland that were released a while back. So Displayland is actually not on anymore, which totally, be, that's fine, but they did a really jo good job with that application, which I thought was something worth mentioning. First, the Display.Land app was sunset on August 11, 2020. Access to the app and associated data is no longer available. Remind me, what were your other com you know, competition apps, please? Like. It doesn't matter. Somebody can come out with an app tomorrow. Like, that's why I'm asking, like, what's the plan? Not what is, what are you doing now? Like, what's the plan? What if somebody comes out and says, hey, you know what? You don't have to spend that much money. You can just grab your phone and do it. It might take you a little bit. It might not be as accurate, but you get to bring your own character into the world without having to pay absorbent fees or go to some remote location that you're not even close to. <sighs> so let's go down. They will not have the fidelity that professional developers are looking for. Again, Zender with the mic drop. This dude knows what he's talking about. He knows how to handle people's questions. Like it's simple, right? Like it's, that's all you got to do is just say, hey, they were looking to be a premium application, a premium application that will have high quality, high fidelity, the, you know, 3D models. That's awesome. And I said, you're correct. They did stop supporting. So this is responding to the display.land app. They did support, you know, stop supporting it, but it worked great. And there are other applications like it. And there's a few of them that are listed here, you know, but I'm not asking about a specific competition. The question is, why would someone choose MetaHero versus others? Why wait for a traveling unit? And right away, I like I had sent at the same time as Xander did. And I said, hey, thank you. This makes sense. Like I get your target audience now. You're not trying to target the everyday person. Like, that's pretty clear. You're not looking at, the, you know, the everyday uh, average user. You're looking at people that want high fidelity quality stuff, which is cool. Like, totally fine. And I don't know who this his clown is, but he goes, oh, I was going to get there. That's great. So, and then people are, feel like they're experts, so they want to add to it, right? They talk about how there's this re high resolution stuff. Like, I read this stuff, guys. Like, I know, I know. I did my homework. I'm not just, you know, talking here. Like, I actually did my homework. Um... And like Xander, once again, no problem. The database is key. We're creating the largest real world asset and digitized 3D NFT database. Like that, this is really cool. This is why I say that the company knows what they're doing and it's a worthwhile project. So, um, so this goes back to the original question. It's not mass adoption push. The goal is mass adoption from professionals, right? Like you're looking at a specific group of people, not everyday users. People aren't asking this. People think that, oh, it's an NFT. It's decentralized. We're all, you know, we're all going to be winning. We're all going to make money. It, that's not what this is. <sighs> You're, you know, why did they use Wolf Studio for Cyberpunk? Maybe because it's the best. Like, great, buddy. Thanks, Jared. Go back to Subway. So this goes back to the original question. It's not mass adoption. So gamers will want to scan their own avatars and play as their favorite celebrity or person. Yeah, Xander, genius. I think this is a great idea. So they put up a news thing here for me, the, you know, the, the whole J44R person talking about how they're, you know, piggybacking a bunch of other platforms. If this is not you know, adoption in mass, I don't know what is. Great, you're, you're getting these giant corporations to adopt something. Google. Twitter? Facebook? Bro, that's not mass adoption. Those are mass companies adopting something. Yes, it pushes people to adopt things, but it is not mass adoption the way that we want to see on the blockchain. Like, that's not what it is. And I re responded to Jared, I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, hating on decisions. I'm seeking to better understand the company model. Like, I'm trying to be as honest as possible. I don't know why people are getting so easily offended with this stuff. So um, when business start, move yeah, there we go. So when business start moving to crypto, people will have no choice but to follow. And we are set, you know, setting that example. Great. I understand that. But you understand also that when you bring corporations into something before people, the people who win are corporations, not people. That's the main thing that I don't like about the Meta Hero project. It's not focusing on people, but they are unwilling to admit that at you know point blank. They'll literally dismiss your question. And I had to pry and ask tougher questions to be able to get to it. So, Xander, I mean, I truly believe tokenized business is the future. 
I agree. I think that this is the way it's going. And he's trying to bring it back. Again, sorry, I was wrong. Don't double his salary. Whatever Xander is making, triple it. Triple it. And again, 100% with you. You know, I agree. It's the, pro it's the way to approach things if you want to do that. So I, I just want to make sure that that's the goal for the company. It's too fluffy and not to the point, especially when I'm asking, you know, a slightly more difficult question. That's all I was saying. And I pointed back to, I don't know, if I click on this, it's going to go up to that question where he goes, I answered your question. Can you move on? You got another? So our first goal is to bring 10 million gamers into, into crypto through our tech. Great. Easy to the point. I get it. Thank you, Xander. And the path to get big money involved is to deploy your tech worldwide. Yeah? Like, that's what I don't understand. Like, you want to place these things all over the place. Um, that's what you get for uninformed questions. No question is too difficult. Except, this is a reply talking about the, I answered your question, what's the next one? These people are nuts. These people are insane. And I was, I don't know if I'm doing this the wrong way, guys, but I just said, okay, sorry. Maybe it's too offensive, not too difficult. But again, I'm just trying to move on to this point. So these guys, and again, I'm, I'm being nice and kind and actually excited about the things that they're doing, which again, I think it's cool. These guys knows, knows what's up. Like, you know, the Wolf Group, they, they do stuff that's really cool. They've been used by really big people. So they know how to, you know, navigate in this world. And now back, you know, backpedaling a little bit. Oh, don't worry about it. We're here to help. Now they're here to help. All right, let's see how this goes. You'll see. You will see. I promise. I promise. I promise. Man, let me scroll down. Is there a reason as to why there is a 5% penalty when selling hero tokens? The reason I'm asking this question is because I've seen it a bunch of times on this Telegram chat here that people say, my tokens are going down. Why is this happening? And I want to make sure I understand it clearly. Um... I understand, and, and I like I knew they were gonna just basically crap on my question, and I put another one follow up. I understand the distribution, but why set it up that way? It's for buying and selling. It's one of the features of the token. Yeah, I understand that it's a feature of the token, but why? That doesn't answer the why question, right? And I understand distribution again. Puts up a, a graph, a picture. I read. I know. So, look at that, Xander. So we don't flood the market with tokens keeps us accountable as well. And I, I was replying to the one before and it just happens to go about the same time and replying to him saying, I, I got the distribution. Like, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh, man, this was a mess. So here we go. I replied to Xander because he's the only one giving me actual, you know, good responses here. So that's a good way to look at it. What about the people that might feel the company is taking a 5% cut anytime they might want to exit? Every investor should be aware there's a 5% tax fee for transaction. It's their decision at the end. Amazing tokenomics don't come without fees. That's not what I'm asking, guys. Like that's You're just trying to say that I'm wrong for asking a question. Plus, investors feel 5% is too much. They can always buy on, you know, SCXs and, you know, without any fees. That's not true. I'm not going to buy stuff on somewhere, someone else's platform which at the end of the day doesn't belong to me. So the tokens I hold aren't mine. No thanks. Like I want to actually hold my tokens. It's not how, how I operate. Is it really a fee though? There is no, it's there to reward holders as I see it unless I'm reading wrong. If there, if it deters a few who want in and out in a few hours, well, and I agree, I agree. This is good. This is not a bad way to look at it. It's not something I would do. It's not something I would you know, implement because at the end of the day, if you have something of value, why would you put a fee on it? If somebody knows the value, they're going to hold on to it. Um, it would totally discourage day trading the token, which again, like I'm trying to be new, not, not even neutral. Like I'm saying there are good things and there are bad things about this. I get it. And Xander, again, yeah, that's exactly it. Why would you want to day trade on a new token? St st <laughs> steady growth is the goal. Yeah, steady growth is the goal, but making money is a bigger goal for most people that are in crypto. So yeah, there's that. <sighs> I've said to some of you privately, and I'll say here again, I'm not trying to hit on the project. I'm just asking questions. Most people are too afraid to ask. Again, it's what I'm sharing with you guys right now. And Xander, once again, like I'll answer it. 
again, this guy's trying to tell me to go buy in some some random exchange, and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not interested in buying an exchange. That's not what I'm asking, because I know plenty of people that refuse to go to different exchanges. They want to hold their stuff in their MetaMask wallet, and a, you know, that's it. And that's how I come back with it with you guys. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to hold my code tokens and of story. Look at this. You were down 70 tokens. So this is a conversation um, that they're having simultaneously um, because of those rewards. Somebody's actually losing their money, their rewards here. And they're like, my rewards are going down. I'm losing my tokens. I'm losing my tokens. And at the end of the day, they're not losing their tokens. They're losing their rewards because the way they bundle the rewards, it's not actually your rewards right there and then. It's a it's a it's a holder reward. Like it shows you that this is how much you know how many tokens you have. You don't really have those tokens, and the more people buy, the the you know the less rewards you have. That's the other crazy thing. You're gonna see this in this chat. And I asked a question just to clarify because I do get this because after reading the white paper, can someone lose what they put in? No, they can't. Which is good. Like that makes sense. Ah, uh, here we go. So, I have seen my tokens increase five hundred and fifty odd over last week alone. Great, like you're 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 shilling this. Fantastic. Uh, it doesn't matter. Like I asked a question, at that's it. <sighs> Can someone lose a token? So your rewards go up and down depending on the market and price. It's a temporary decline due to new holders and the way rewards get distributed. Remember how I told you about that major issue that they had with the audit? This is it. This is why people are getting a little bit pissy because they don't understand the details. They don't read it. If they read it, they would have seen this. They would have understood how things are taking place. Here's where I, this question is essentially what got me kicked off at the end of the day. Like I know the information is out there and I've read it, but seeing the amount of people claiming they are losing tokens doesn't it look like a bait and switch when they don't get the amount they originally expected? Because you're, you know, like, oh, you have this many tokens, and all of a sudden, you have less tokens and less tokens and less tokens. Like, that's super sketchy. If you're buying into something thinking that you're getting X number, and all of a sudden, you open the app again, and it's down. I'm not saying that it's bait and switch. I'm saying that it looks that way to the people that are purchasing. I'm not, again, I'm not saying they're scammers. I'm not saying that they're doing it wrong. I'm just... <laughs> I'm asking, it, don't they think it looks that way for the people that don't read? First thing that comes out, FUD. Read the message above. You're edging it, mate. I'm not edging it. I'm asking a question. I'm asking a question. Bait and switch, it's completely transparent. I think I called Elmer FUD. This is hilarious. If I was editing video and you know, actually putting more stuff into this one, I'd put a little picture right here. This is ridiculous, I'll tell you. Um, you're edging mate. I think some, somebody needs to give the oversimplified ordering pizza version to him. Yeah, you should give me the oversimplified version because if you're not doing that for people that are coming onto your group, well, guess what? I don't think you're welcoming enough to the people that are new. I get it. Again, I don't think you guys re read this right. I read it. I understand. And I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm saying that's how people are perceiving it. Look, they lose tokens from bonus, not from you buy it. Like, I'm three weeks already, started, you know, D-Day man, and, you know, you decrease a few tokens, whatever. Like, that's fine. Jeez, all you have to say is no. Meta here is doing everything it can to ensure new investors understand the tokenomic and rewards. That's it. And not, like... I know I'm crying, calling people name, names here, but it's not a crybaby. I mean, Kevin, Kevin, uh, me, Kevin, me, Kevin Pathraff. We got to get that right. You guys are rebranding, right? Like calling people crybabies. Is that, is that really that bad? I don't, I don't think it is. You guys, they're just going FUD, 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 FUD. And everything that they don't like people saying, even when it's in a question. So, it's just that they don't understand how it works. We get these questions every day. And after that, that they come back happy. Right. That's exactly what I'm saying. So is there a way to better educate the people that are buying your tokens now instead of later? Some doof is saying that I don't understand the concept. I'm talking things that aren't true. If you can find one statement that is not true, 
that wasn't a question, literally a statement that I made that wasn't true, let me know. I'd love to go back and, you know, come back on here and say, guys, I was wrong. It's not it. Oh, I sound like a dick. That What's my point? My point is that people don't get it. If people are coming back to this channel every single day asking questions and upset about this thing, my point is that what are you doing about it? What are you doing to change this perspective? That's what I'm asking. How much money did I put in it? I put $0 in this, and it's going to continue to be that way. I'm just answering these questions because I'm not going to get around to it later. <sighs> it appears I don't want don't to understand tokenomics. Again, people aren't reading. They are just calling FUD and then joining in the gang, ganging up on everybody else. Oh, yeah, it's not on iOS yet. That's something else that, that took place. This is looking more and more like trolling. I'm a simple investor. As I read the white paper. I did the study. I bought. I'm happy. You know buy. You're happy. What's the problem? I got an even bigger problem. You're going to see what it is in a second. Xander, with a killer answer. Maybe we need a video on rewards. Yes, you need a video on rewards. Maybe this is your video on rewards. Because at the end of the day, people don't get it. And that's why I'm asking the question. This is looking more and more like trolling. I said, that's awesome. And you should re read it and understand it. I have as well. I'm not trolling. I promise to cover the token for my subscribers. And I'm going to ask the things they want to know. Guys, like if you're putting out a product, expect the questions. Expect the questions multiple times. Expect the hard questions. Don't run away from it. Welcome it. That's how you grow. <sighs> I know this is, can you see why I was a little anxious while, when I started doing this? Look, do you use the app? If not, you better use that for a week. What's the point of using an app and seeing exactly what I understand already takes place? Like, I get it. So, I'll click on this one. So, the 5% fee should be on buying and not selling. Having this on selling causes a lot of confusion. This is an honest opinion, right? And, like, I reply to it saying this here. It's an opinion. I don't agree with it, but it isn't FUD because that's what they're claiming. Everybody that says something that they don't like, they call it FUD, which is not true. I said, all fine, but you don't need to call, you know, to call a big project a big a bait just because you did not understand the system no sir you did not understand my question you did not read it i understand the system i want to make sure that other people understand it because obviously people are coming back to this uh, to, to this you know chat every single day having the same question the same complaints something's wrong letting sellers out with no fees not a good idea this will hurt long-term investors and would not reward them the same way yeah yeah, yeah. but that's fair Again, Xander, now you're not, you should not make double or triple. Let's make it 4x. It, it, just, it was really frustrating to no end to, to see people acting like this. What is the difference in having 5% fee on buying and selling? It is exact same thing. Yeah, this, this dude gets it. So you want to make sure that you're not going to create that confusion when people are buying in. I mean, or selling, right? Because when you sell, when you try to liquidate, you can't liquidate. It's a, it fails. The transactions fail. It's a mess. All right. I need to, you know, I need to do the reading or whatever. So this is my response. I did exactly that. I didn't say it was bait. I asked, doesn't it look like a bait and switch? If you don't get the amount they originally expected, not they earned, they deserved, expected. But his last comment I replied to because you aren't worth my time. They really aren't. And you see how this goes from bad to worse in a second. Where CEO go? Toilet? Trying, you know, to, to Google News? So this is all I did. I said, sorry, I was busy with your... And I ended right there. And the next comment that they deleted that is not here anymore, and I don't know if I have a... I don't know if I have a screenshot. No, I might have a screenshot of it. I said, after your, I put another message that I sent out, and I said... You're nothing because I'm not that low. I would never go there, but thanks. And I left it at that. From that point, I was removed from the chat, and they literally banned me from the group, which is why I had to open another account to show you guys what took place. I don't know if anyone would ever, ever put their money down on something like this. They have no idea who I am. They have no idea what I own, how much I'm worth. But they're calling me poor. They're calling me stupid to my face. 
because I have questions. How ridiculous is that? I'm not trying to create drama here, but this is bad. This is really bad. And I want to do it justice here by showing you part of the conversation I had with Xander. So Xander said that, you know, on the other chat, said that we could talk right there. And then he talks about talking here because it could be less noisy. And I said, up to you. I gave you an option at the beginning. I don't mind people hearing what I have to ask or getting upset like that dude. Um, in the end, I'm asking things because I want to know and be honest with the things I share. I believe it's only fair to do my research before sharing things with others. The dude gets it. The dude is on point. Like, he understands this. So, I mean, let's talk here. Of course, I have to talk here because I got banned from the other channel, right? So, people, they're bought into this thing way too hard. He wants to answer my questions. He wants to take care of things. And he talks about, you know, how Telegram can be. Like, I know. I I. I'm, I'm the manager of multiple groups, big ones even, and I know how people work. People are passionate apparently to hit, you know, to Xander and they have great potential. And again, same thing that I've been saying from the beginning, not trying to shill or bring this, this token down. It's, it's a really cool business model, which is why I'm talking about this. And he wants to know about my YouTube. So with that note, guys, I'm going to come back to this screen right here. Please like this video because you know people are going to be coming in here hating on it because they have an army of people wanting to put down people that don't agree with them. So if you can do me a favor, I know this video is running way longer than I expected than I could have ever made. Like, oh, Jesus, we're looking at an hour. We're going to try to wrap, wrap it up here in the next four minutes just to, to keep this nice and short. I don't think call it short anymore. This is a lot of drama to go over. All right, take a look at this. Ten reasons why... Um, Meta Hero has multi-billion dollar potential, and I agree with this. However, take a listen why I don't support it. And I'm, it's going to be a clip, and let me make sure I got this. Yeah, I got playback at times two speed, so it'll be quick. The first thing you need to realize about any project, any business, any crypto project included, is that most of them will fail. Most of them are being built by people who have never built anything before. Um, statistics show that 90% of all businesses in the world fail in the first three years. I'm pretty sure the same thing applies to all crypto projects. So anything you see on like the top 100, top 1,000 coin market cap, coin gecko, a lot of that stuff's gonna be gone in a few years or just dead because it's gonna be abandoned. Um, so this is the first thing that we have going for ourselves is that I, if you don't know this about me, I, for the nine years leading up to this crypto project, I was working on a company called Codewise. I managed to make it the second fastest growing company in Europe. It made me land on the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made millionaire. You know, I've, I've done this before. I played the game. I managed people. I have 250 people in the company at one point. I, I have the experience and I know how not to fuck up to make a startup fail because there's these pivotal points where it's very easy to get comfortable once you start getting like some profits and things can go south very, very quick. So that is huge is that we have this experience. We have the experience team. We built many, I built many very successful startups and this is just another one. And this is actually the easiest one in any most positive sense because it's, you get rid of all the legacy bullshit, the over encumbering stuff, like the bureaucracy, the accounting, the legal, the lawyers, you just get to focus on building. And so I, as a founder, get to avoid burnout. I get more time to speak to the community like I'm doing right now on this YouTube channel. I think this is. Okay. Here's the part where I give you my thoughts and comments on this thing. Yes. It's awesome that you give more time to the community. That's great. You're also building a cult following by going heroes. And at the end of the day, that is not what this is because the people who are going to benefit from the project are not heroes. Sure, your token might go up, but this project is really geared towards people who have money. $200 is a lot of money for some people. There's no way that somebody would spend $200 getting themselves a little avatar if they don't have enough money to put food on the table. This is not decentralization. This is empowering individuals to make more money. There's only 12 units going to be deployed in 2022. I bet you those are not going to be you know, decentralized. They're going to be owned by the company or they're going to be owned by investors, which he covers inside of the white paper. He talks about that, right? So <sighs> three issues. You got to be negative about others. Like people always fail. I don't fail. I'm, I'm awesome. And I don't have to work hard. I get to relax because I don't have legal. I don't have this and if you don't have legal, if you're not doing your due diligence on stuff, I would not support it at all. Like th that, w that's where get, things get sketchy. You're just making decisions out of the blue, however you feel like it. That's not, that's not how you run a multi-billion dollar business. Is it, is there potential? Heck yeah. Do you know what you're doing? You know, Rob? Yeah. You got, you're, you're, you're a self-made man. G good, good job. Next one, post-launch. And like I was telling you guys, I open these videos 
And these are the only ones that I've actually seen. And I'm just going to show you the little pieces that I've seen that kind of made me go, what? Hello, heroes. Hello, everybody. This is uh, the first kind of concrete post-launch update. We've done some amazing things that I think very few, if any projects have done ever in the history of crypto. Um, hitting 100 million total market cap within two minutes. I think if none of that bot attack, uh, who knows how high that would have gone. Anyway, that's in the past. But now, more importantly, within 18 hours, we we're listening on both CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. No project has ever done that, I don't believe. And uh, the simple explanation for that is, is that we are deeply, deeply connected in the crypto space. Uh, we have some extremely powerful advisors who essentially get us in these places that other projects simply have to wait weeks for. Uh, All right. I don't know if you heard that, but he basically said that, hey, we get in places because we know people. It's the opposite of what he said in this video, right? Like he was literally talking about how he's tired of people that have money and people that are just taking advantage of other people. And it's all cronyism to just a few days later, go ahead and say the reason that they are successful because he knows powerful people. This is garbage. Are you kidding me? Take a look at this. This is what I'm saying. Like at the end of the day, we believe businesses should make revenue and become profitable as soon as possible to create sustainable foundation to grow too many crypto projects are based on promises and hype and as a result are purely fueled by speculation i get this i understand this right people do fail and it sucks you don't put people that are trying their hardest down you say man i'm so sorry it didn't go well for you try again if you want to be the person who's saying, oh, they suck and I'm better than them, I can't support you. I can't do that with a clean conscience. At the end of the day, that's, that's how I feel about this. The goal, the business model, is to create a franchise model. Do you see this? So below, you can see our forecast based on getting 12 meta scanners in place in 2022 and many more through our franchise model the following years. Guys, a franchise model is nothing more than getting people who have money to give you money and then to continue to give you money long term. As a business, this is phenomenal. This is an amazing idea. It's profitable. It's worth it. And I think he's going to make a killing doing it. This is not what the blockchain is all about. I can't support it with a clean conscience. Here's why I think this was a crazy video for me to even cover. Rob, at the time of this thing here that I Googled, was worth $180 million, number 57 on Forbes' 100 richest. I'm not trying to pick a fight. The dude has money. I am a tiny little YouTube channel. My voice isn't very powerful in comparison to the, the voice that he has because of the money he has behind him. So, Rob, if you're listening to this... You have a great business model, and it's not that I don't think it's worthwhile. It's not that I don't think that you're a genius at what you do. I respect you, and you should give Xander a raise if I haven't told you that yet. But, dude, let's call it what it is. Don't say that you're tired of cronyism and people taking advantage of the system and having businesses take over the little guys, when in reality, that's exactly what your business model is, bro. Like, that's what's happening. That's what really upsets me about all of this. Like, it's not, it's not, just be honest, be, be upfront with stuff. Because you got a bunch of people going, hero, that don't get it. That think they're a part of something way bigger. And in reality, what they're doing is buying a gift card. Literally buying a gift card, because the tokens can only be utilized within your ecosystem. So it's a gift card to purchase an avatar that they might never, ever be able to afford. And they're not getting it. And the people that are answering questions are jerks. And they're very, very easily offended. And they can't take they can't take criticism. So if you want to grow, if you want to really be successful, which I think you can be, because this project is actually really stinking cool. And I'm not telling people not to buy this coin because I'm not buying it because not I don't believe in a project. I don't buy it because I don't believe in the way that you're going about things. I, it's not something I want to put my money behind. But most of all, and if you want to have a good laugh, this is the reason why I can't support it. Upload it into your favorite game. 
uh, make make gifs out of your 3D self. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know if you guys heard that. Did you hear that? Your 3D self. You can use it for medicine. You can use it for fashion. It has endless, endless, you know, endless Listen possibilities. Listen to this. What you can do with that? Upload it into your favorite game. Uh, make make gifs out of your 3D self. I'm gonna say this once and never again. <laughs> I can't stand behind a project where somebody calls GIF, GIFs, GIFs, GIFs. It's not peanut butter. It's not a GIF. It's a GIF. I'm done. Like, I'm tired. It's late. I tried recording this video six times. I got interrupted five times. I've had messages be popping up left and right. I had to turn things off. But going over an hour for one video, this is the first one that's been like this. If you get to the end of this video, let me know. Jeez, like more power to you. I'll see if I can get you a gift or something because it's a long time. I can't even sense, you know, listening to myself anymore. Like I'm ending it here and you all are awesome for watching this. I'm sorry if it was long winded, but I think it was worth it. I spent a lot of time researching this and I want to make sure that I gave you all the information that I found out on it. Thank you to all of you that have been with the channel that are subscribed and you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Tomorrow, I got something special coming out. Yeah, we're going to talk about DPR, but we'll leave you here. See you all.